it's like when the marriage starts to go awry, like sometimes in films it's like, oh, long looks into the mid distance, all this silent contemplation. What does Colette do? She decides to go on the stage, which was a very radical thing. It wasn't high theater, it wasn't Shakespeare, it was the music hall. She became like exiled from her class, which is essentially a bourgeois class, by this decision. It was considered a very scandalous thing to do. And the nature of the things she did, the dream of Egypt caused a riot. She kissed a woman in public. The play Flesh, she reveals her breast at a time when women weren't even showing their ankles. You know, I mean, she just was so fearless. And that's what she's doing as a way of finding the voice that she's not getting through the credit on her work. Colette lived an astonishing life. She really took radical decisions about her life at all phases. But this is a particularly interesting time. It's really about her birth as an artist and a writer. Um, we see her in a, involved in a marriage to a very charismatic man who starts to control her and be very parasitic on her talent. So really the interesting thing about the story is seeing her use all her personal power to break out of this situation and she does it in the most spectacular and transgressive way. This was really a passion project for myself and my co-writer, co-director and late husband Richard Glatzer. Richard was a complete francophile, he spoke fluent French, he was obsessed with French literature and he was obsessed with Colette and really it was through his interest that that was the seed for this film. Um, we started reading a lot of Colette biographies and Colette's works because she essentially wrote a lot about her own life and experience around 1999. And we, in 2001, we went to France. We visited as many of Colette's uh, houses and places she lived and worked as we could and just filled ourselves up. Richard wrote the first draft in 10 days and then it's taken 16 years to get it made. Richard was diagnosed with ALS in 2011. And for the last four years of his life, he was gradually paralyzed, but he still wanted to keep making films. He just would not give in. And after Still Alice, um, he was very ill. Um, but I said, what do you want to do next? And, you know, he said, Colette. Colette was a very exceptional person. She had an incredible intellect, incredibly quick, um, but also a sensuality, a naturalness, a connection to the earth, to nature, and a, a fierceness. And Kira <laughs> ticks all those boxes. Uh, I think uh, it was a natural fit. I'd read quite a few of her books and loved her books, but didn't know anything really about her personal life. Um, so was fascinated by the idea of this relationship uh, and, and sort of uh, how her husband took credit for her work and then how she, she gradually found her own voice within it. And how much did you know about Willie? No one knows anything about w Willie, which is extraordinary because he was a huge star in his day and 3,000 people went to his funeral. And now he, history hasn't been so kind or he's now known as the, I suppose, the charming parasite of, 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 their, of their relationship. Uh, he's, he's an interesting figure. The story really looks at female empowerment. It looks at uh, questions of gender and of sexuality um, and of a woman's right for pleasure in sex. And that was what she was writing about uh, in the 18, late 1890s and the 1900s. Um, and, and it's extraordinary that, you know, it's still sort of so revolutionary today. I think of his story as the story of a heterosexual marriage with a very strong LGBTQ element and it hits the L, the G, the B, the T and definitely the Q. It's a very queer story. When um, the marriage starts to rupture under the strain of, you know, Colette's authorship being denied, she forms a relationship with a woman who is masculine, a woman who identified as a man and lived as a man, dressed as a man in that time, which was just extremely radical. And Colette fell in love with this woman who was so outspoken and so in touch with her authentic self. I think that inspired Colette in many ways to break free. It was really nice watching it with the audience last night because it, I actually it, I had the same reaction to the script, which is you sort of you start it and you think, oh, it's a period film, okay. You think, oh, okay, well I know what's I know what's going on. I don't wait a minute. Every sort of few pages, there'd be something that would just go, oh, okay, they're sleeping together before they're married. Well, that so far that's not common in period films. I loved the kind of the surprises and and the the how you can make a period film and yet, sort of as it goes, it becomes more and more and more modern. Um, and it, it felt very obvious with the audience last night, which was really lovely. It's just extremely relevant to today. Um, her husband was trying to shut her up. Her husband was trying to claim authorship. He had, in a way, 
all the advantages of male power, but she had a true talent. And really what we're seeing is this woman finding a way to claim her voice, which I think is so relevant to everything that's going on today. I'm very, very inspired by all the women all over the world who are speaking up right now and changing things. And kind of that's what Colette was doing in her time. Thank you.